Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here at Northside today. We welcome every one of you. And you just listening out in the radio listen audience, most certainly appreciate you tuning in to Northside Baptist Church Hour. This is coming to you live right from the auditorium here in Athens. This is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we can be an inspiration to every one of you. Now the singing and the message today will be on cassette tape. It'll be tape number 198. We send these tape out in appreciation for a gift of $3 for each tape. And the gift is used to help take care of our radio expense. And if you write in and get these cassette tape, I'm sure they'll be a blessing to you. Turn your Bible to Luke chapter 13, page 1094. 1094 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. Luke 13. And I'm speaking today on this subject, The Crooked Woman Made Straight. And that'll be tape number 198. Now, when you're writing in for the tape, why not write in for one of our brochures to our proposed Holy Land tour we're planning for March of next year. We'd glad to send you a brochure. Tells you where we're going and how long we'll be gone and the cost and so forth. It's a wonderful 10-day trip. Of course, we'll be going to Israel and Rome, Mount Hermon and Sardar and wonderful places to visit. Now's the time to make plans, begin to make plans for it if you're interested. There may be somebody I'm speaking to out in the radio listen audience. Your pastors never had the privilege and honor of going to the Holy Land. One of the greatest things you could do for him is to send him as a church. I'm talking to someone today. Maybe you're not in your church today. Maybe providence hindered or sick. You ever thought about sending your pastor, your pastor and his wife, be one of the greatest things you could do. I'd be glad to work with you and send you a brochure on the tour. Now, this is my mailing address, Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. You write to me, write for the tape, write for the brochure. Let us hear from you. We're working together in getting out the gospel. And if you just recently come to the Athens area, maybe a student here, maybe you visiting here and you're not getting our daily broadcast, then if you tune to this station where you're now listening, you can get the daily broadcast each day at noon, 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Saturday. I hope you'll do that and let us try to be a blessing to you while you're in this area. Now Luke chapter 13, beginning with verse 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that was done by him. Now if you notice here in this scripture, you find a woman for 18 years, but been bent almost double, could not raise herself up, and been in that condition 18 long years. A devil had put her in that predicament. And Jesus healed her on the Sabbath day. Now he made this crooked woman straight. She was crooked physically. She was bent like a rainbow. She was bent almost double as it were. I remember many years ago, I was in a meeting in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. The pastor and I went to a home for supper one night. There was a man in that home that was bent double. In fact, he was drawn completely, his head even down between his knees. And he could not straighten out at all. And when he sat down, his feet were sticking straight up. And that was a sad looking situation. And I saw him, I 
thought about this woman in a terrible predicament because the devil had bound her below these 18 years. Now we find here in this scripture that Jesus went in the synagogue on the Sabbath. That was his custom. He went in and taught in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Now in those days they met on Saturday, the old Jewish Sabbath. After the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the day of worship was changed from the sixth day, or the seventh day rather, to the first day, which is Sunday. And from that time until now, we have met in worship on the first day of the week. But the Jewish Sabbath was on Saturday, and when Jesus was on the earth, he always went to the synagogue on the Sabbath, and so did the apostles and others. They believed in going to worship on the Sabbath day. Now Sunday today is a day that's set aside when God's people need to turn aside from that daily task and worship God and rest on the Lord's day. Now you ought to do that. Now Jesus always did that and so did the apostles. And he commands in the word of God that we do likewise. Many times you find church members saying, well, I work hard six days a week and I'm going to stay at home and rest on Sunday. Well, you can rest in God's house. You'd be surprised how it would rest you to come to the house of God, join in on the fellowship and the singing, and hear the word of God preach and just sit and relax and rest in an air-conditioned building. And you can go home more rested than you would have been maybe if you'd have hung around your house. Why don't you try it sometime? Your place as a born-again believer is in the house of God on the Lord's day. Now you may go other places, but your place and responsibility is in the house of God. The Bible is clear on that. The Bible said not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together and exhorting one another and that much the more as you see that day approaching. That is the coming of the Lord. I do know that some people because of very age and some because of an illness or some that are disabled to be in God's house on the Lord's day, they would very much like to be in God's house. And then there's others that that's providentially hindered, maybe like nurses in the hospital and, and places like that that's employed on the Lord's day that you would like to be in God's house, but it's required that you be there in the hospital as a nurse or wherever you're employed for that a good cause. Now, God never intended for you to just go out and deliberately find yourself a job and work on Sunday. You'll never gain anything by doing so. I know of a man one time, he worked during the week in the plant and, and worked as a mechanic on the Lord's day. And he'd get out on the automobiles and he'd work on those cars. And one Sunday he's working on a car and the thing slipped off of what he had it propped up with and cut his arm off. And he had to spend the rest of his days with one arm. Now that was a man had a day when you don't have to do it. Now, you may think that you do, but you don't. In the long run, somewhere along the way, it'll cost you. And you'll never gain anything by it. I believe that with all of my heart. Now, Jesus is in the synagogue on the Lord's Day, on the Sabbath. And he went there to worship. He went there to be with the people. He went there to teach and so forth. And notice, number one, that we find a woman there bound by Satan. Verse 16. And he said, Oh, not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound low these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. Now the devil had this woman all bound up, and she had been in this predicament for 18 years, and the devil had her in this condition. And she's a type of all sinners. She's a typical woman from that viewpoint, a type of all sinners without God, bound by the habits of this world, enslaved by whatever the devil wants you to be doing. And so she was about 18 years. All lost people today are bound by Satan. There's never been a time in the history of mankind when you have so many young people across the nation that's committing suicide. Now what's causing our young people to commit suicide? Only one thing, that's the devil. They listen to this old rock and roll music. They look at all this filth coming into their living rooms by the way of TV and uh, sometimes by radio, they read these old sex no uh, novels and books and pornography and things of that type. And then they just go out and take their lives, commit suicide. They get on dope and this old rock and roll music is out of hell. 
It's bounced out of hell. These old beetle bugs from England came over years ago and brought that uh, junk over here to this country. And our young people has never been the same since. All of that is of the devil. And this old rock and roll, hard rock music is the, of the devil. And it causes the young people to be enticed by dope. They start smoking marijuana and pot and all that kind of stuff. And the first thing you know, they are stuck. They're enslaved by dope and they commit suicide. And they're committing suicide uh, uh, in an academic manner all over this nation because they have enslaved by dope and this hard rock music and pornography and things of that type that our young people are exposed to. Now you need to try to guard your young people the best you possibly can away from all of that kind of junk. This old rock and roll junk and a lot of so-called country music is not fit to listen to. Now you better believe that. And beloved, our young people being led astray and becoming um, uh, somewhat confused and they say, well, what's the use? I might as well go ahead and take my life. They see a lot of murder and things like that on TV and they're committing suicide and ending up, most of them, in a devil's hell. And that's pathetic. Now, the devil is causing all of this, all of the liquor crowd and the dope and the ungodly moving picture shows, the films that come out of Hollywood. The devil is behind every bit of that. That's of Satan. That's out of hell itself. You need to realize that. And so you have people today that's bound by these habits. No doubt there's someone today listening to me out in the radio listening audience. You're, you're bound by some kind of habit. It may be alcohol. It may be dope. It may be some other habit that you have. And the devil has you entwined and bound by these habits. And he's holding you. He has you under pressure. He wants to hasten you to a premature grave and your soul into hell. And people lead these chains of darkness around with them wherever they go. And the devil holds to his own. Now this woman here, she was bound by Satan. Only God could break her loose from the power of the devil. And only God can break people today loose from alcohol and dope and things of that type. You need to realize that. God can deliver people. God does deliver people. And he will do it if they really want to be delivered. Number two, she had been this way for 18 long years. Look at verse 11. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. Here's a woman 18 years walking around, bent over, and could not straighten up. She was a sad looking person to look at in those days, no doubt. Walking around trying to get about all bent over in that manner. Now some of you have been bound more than 18 years by the devil. You've been serving Satan maybe uh, more uh, years than 18. I was 21 before I was converted. That meant for 21 years, uh, especially after I reached the age of accountability, I was bound by Satan. And I may be speaking to someone today for more than 18 years. The devil's had you in his clutches. Now God will deliver you. He wants to deliver you. He will deliver you if you let him do so. Now, people today regret that they didn't serve God, didn't come to God when they were young. I've heard adults after they got saved, they said, my greatest regret is I did not come to God in my youth. The Bible said, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. Come to God while you're young and you'll never regret that. Now, here's something here that's startling that you need to take a good look at. And that is this woman was all bent over. If anyone in that day had, had an excuse for not being in church or in the synagogue on the Sabbath, no doubt it had been this woman because she was bent over and could, could not straighten herself up. And yet this woman went to the Sabbath on the, uh, went to church on the Sabbath, the synagogue. She went to the place of worship on the Sabbath, although she was bent over by the power of Satan. A lot of people today will use little flimsy excuses not to go to the place of worship. And if you were bent over like this woman, you probably never would go to a place of worship. Now she did. She went to the place of worship on the Sabbath day, although she was almost bent double. Our, my people, if they're afflicted or if they're uh, sick or and, uh, able to be in God's house and they come to God's house in spite of their illness, in spite of their affliction, and they come in putting forth that special effort to be in God's house, are my people like that? Now God knows that and God sees them and God appreciates that special effort put forth. 
We shouldn't murmur and complain about being in the house of God. You know, a lot of times doing revivals and special services and services like Wednesday night or another time when you have special services, people say, well, I'm just too tired. I work hard all day. We shouldn't complain about that. A lot of people are disabled to work. A lot of people are not strong enough to work, would like to have a job to work. And yet a lot of people say, well, I'm just too tired to go to the revival. I'm too tired to go to the uh, prayer meeting and, and I just uh, shouldn't go. I think I'll just stay at home. Did you know the best rest that you could get as a Christian would be in the house of God? Whether it be revival, Wednesday night prayer service or whatnot, you can come and sit in the house of God and no doubt on a padded pew, an air-conditioned building, and you can relax and, and sing and worship and praise the Lord and listen to the Bible being taught. Do you know any better way to rest and relax? Now, if you stayed at home, you'd be doing something, no doubt. You'd be busy around the house. You wouldn't get that kind of rest. And yet you say, well, I'm just too tired to go. I work hard all day and I'm too tired. To go. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Make a statement like that. You're doing it for the Lord. You're doing it for Jesus' sake. You're doing it in order that you might worship God and, and keep the church door open and do what you can to the glory of God. You shouldn't complain about that. A lot of people are disabled to do that. A lot of people don't even have a job to work or earn money. You should never complain about what you do for God. You ought to always take a positive outlook and say, Praise God. I'm a little tired in my body, but thank God I'm glad to be in the house of God for Jesus' sake and to the glory of God. A lot of people are disabled to be here. You ought to take that attitude about it. It grieves the Spirit of God. It's not pleasing to the Lord to murmur, complain, and grumble about serving Him. You ought to be ashamed to do so and always be proud of the fact that you're able to serve the Lord. Now this woman, in spite of her condition, she was in the synagogue on the Sabbath. No doubt somebody said, look at that old woman. For 18 years there, she's been bent double. And there she goes to the synagogue. You watch her. Every Saturday she'll go to the synagogue. You can't stop her. There she goes. But uh, what did she accomplish? She went to the synagogue one day when Jesus was there. And the Lord straightened her out. And I just surmise that she uh, shouted all the way back home. She praised God and and no doubt some of the neighbors said, look, come in yonder. That woman had been bent double for 18 years and she's as straight as a fence post. She's coming down the road, uh, uh, kicking up her heels and, and shouting the victory. Something's happened to that woman. And no doubt she drew a big crowd. I know there's times when people are sick and disabled to be in the house of God. That's understandable. You know, the preacher wouldn't fuss on anybody that's absolutely too sick and disabled to be in God's house. I'd be foolish to fuss on God's people about that. I'm talking about when you can put forth that special effort like this woman did to be in God's house. God will bless you for it. Now she had said that day, you know I've been thrown over double and it's just hard for me to make it to the synagogue and I don't think I'll go today. She had spent the rest of her days all bent double. But she went that day so you don't know what you're going to miss when you lay out of church service. And then notice, will you please, number three, she could in no wise lift herself up. Verse 11, and could in no wise lift herself up. Now, beloved, nobody can save themselves. It has to be by God. Now, she's a type of a sinner, and a man can't any more save himself than this woman could straighten herself up. The Bible says, by grace are you saved through faith, and that none of you says it is the gift of God. Now, this woman was looking earthward. Every way she looked was down, all the time looking down. She didn't have a chance to look up. She was looking at the ground all the time. She was looking earthward. Now that's a picture of every sinner today. The only thing they can see is earthly. They can't see anything heavenly or spiritual. They look at earthly things all together. That's all they can see. That's all she could see was earthly things. And so it is with lost sinners today. Number four, Jesus saw her, verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, he saw her helpless. He saw her suffering. He saw her miserable. I want to say to you today, I don't care where you are, whether you be in this building or out in the radio listening audience, if you are helpless, God sees you. No doubt there's people right now in the nursing homes that's listening to this broadcast. 
They can't walk in wheelchairs. They are helpless. God knows that. God sees them. They're in that convalescent home. They are helpless. Some in their own homes. They are helpless. They can't walk. They can't get about. They're in a wheelchair. They're bed fast, some of them. God sees them. God don't forget them. And then she was suffering. This poor woman was suffering. And there's never a person suffers what God doesn't know about it. All suffering of the people of God registers on the great heart of God. God knows every pain in your body. He knows all the suffering that you endure. God knows all about that. He's touched the feet of your infirmities. And then she was miserable. You know this woman had to be miserable. This poor crooked woman that God made straight had to be a miserable pers person because she was bent double, always looking toward the ground, miserable all the time in a home wherever she went in the synagogue. She was miserable. She was bent over and she could not help herself. Don't you know she was a miserable individual? But God took her out of that misery. I may be speaking to someone today, you're miserable, not because you're afflicted physically, you're miserable because of your sins. You're miserable because of the evil you've done and, and you're doing wrong. God can deliver you. God can pardon you. God can deliver you out of that miserable condition. He's done it for many and he can do it for you. And Jesus saw her and God sees you. I don't care where you are. God sees you there in your home, in your automobile, or in the hospital, wherever you may be right now, God sees you. Nobody can be hid from God. Then we come to thought number five, and that is, he called her to him. Verse 12, he called her to him. Jesus said, come to me. Now God called her to him. When Noah had finished the ark, in Genesis chapter 7 and verse 1, God said, Noah, come into the ark. God called Noah and his family in. We find that Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 1 verse, verse 18, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. God wants you to come and reason with him. God's a reasonable God. Now we often say many times that person's unreasonable. You can't reason with that individual. Well, that may be true, but God's not like that. God is a reasonable individual. And you can reason with God about anything. If you're sincere, if you're coming to the Lord, if you mean business. Isaiah said, come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. God will reason with you. He's a reasonable God. And if you let him, if you come to him and require God will reason with you. And then we find Jesus said in Matthew 11, verse 28 and, uh, through 30, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. So Jesus said, if you want rest for your soul, you can find it. You can find rest for your soul, rest for your mind and body in the Lord Jesus Christ. No greater place to find rest than in the Lord and in the house of God. So you need to realize that the Holy Spirit is now calling, come, come, says the Holy Spirit. Now, if there's some lost person listening today, the Spirit of God is calling you. He wants you to come to the Lord. He wants you to be saved. The Spirit of God is pricking your heart and He wants you to come. And if you will come to God, God will most certainly save you. The Spirit of God is calling you. Unless the Spirit of God calls you, you won't come to God. But if he's calling you, you ought to obey God and come to the Lord. Number six, he was immediately, uh, she was immediately made straight. The Bible says in verse 13, he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight. That doesn't take God all day to do something. I'm reminded of the little boy that went in the blacksmith shop some time ago and the old blacksmith there was heating horseshoes and he had one that he just heated and and it was red, and, and this little boy walked in. He reached down and picked the thing up, and when he picked it up, it was hot. He dropped it about as quick as he picked it up, and, uh, and the blacksmith said, Sonny boy, said, uh, kind of hot, wasn't it? He said, well, it doesn't take me all day to look at a horseshoe. And so sometimes, beloved, God is able to save you in a moment in the twinkle of an eye, and he can. God can save you. I heard of a man being saved in Normandy when he jumped out of that airplane, in Normandy, he was saved before his uh, parachute hit the ground. And between the, the up there where he jumped out of the plane and where he landed in Normandy, the man was saved. Now, beloved, God is able to save you anytime, any place, and anywhere that you really mean business. Now, this man that jumped out of the plane and his parachute started down, there were German soldiers down there, 
and he was a lost man and he didn't want to get killed and go to hell and God saved him before he hit the ground and he's preaching the gospel today. And so it doesn't take God all day to save anyone. God can save you in a moment, a twinkling if you mean business, and God can save you in your home. God can save you in the church. God can save you in the hospital. God can save you wherever you may be. So why don't you let the Lord save you wherever you are? There may be someone out in the radio listening audience riding down the highway. God will save you as you drive down the highway if you mean business. Uh, why don't you just pull off the side of the road and, and just bow your head and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, save me for Jesus' sake. And let the Lord save you right now. There may be someone there in your home. You had a bad night last night. Maybe you hit the bottle, you went out, and you lived a, a terrible, evil a life last night. And, and there you come in, and now you got the headache, and you're in bad shape, and you know it. And why don't you uh, stop that foolishness? Get out on your knees, ask God to save you and deliver you before you end up in a drunkard's grave in a devil's hell. I'll tell you, this nation's flooded with liquor today. Liquor, beer, and wine flowing. And uh, beloved people are becoming drunks every day. And people are driving drunk on the highways. People are being slaughtered every day under the influence of alcohol. And the devil has them in his clutches and he will make a drunkard out of you, send you a drunkard's grave and let your soul go to hell. Why don't you wake up and throw that bottle away and get that stinking beer out of your refrigerator and throw all that junk out of your house and get right with God before your young'uns come along and become drunkards and go to a drunkard's grave at devil's hell. Many of a parrot have led their children into uh, becoming drunkards because they had always have beer in the house and wine and liquor and their young'uns saw them drinking and they started drinking and they became drunkards and the parents are responsible for it. Get rid of that junk. Get it out of your refrigerator. Carry them all into your home. You see people today, they're going to buy that stuff if they have to do it out bread to eat. It's pathetic. It most certainly is. And then he immediately made her straight. Didn't take him all day. Yeah, all of a sudden she was straightened out. And then number seven, she glorified God. Verse 13. She is made straight and glorified God. You remember when Jesus healed the ten lepers? All ten of them went back and leaving the spot where they were healed. Only one of them turned back and thanked the Lord and he was Samaritan. Nine of them went on their merry way. Now this woman here glorified God. When God straightened her out, she just couldn't do enough for the Lord. She glorified God. She praised the Lord for saving her. Now the dear old colored woman one time said, Lord Jesus... Said, if you'll save me right now, said, you'll never hear the last of it. I'll be thanking you for it the rest of my days. Now we need to realize we ought to be thankful to God and praise the Lord for saving us. Be proud of the fact that God reached down and lifted us out of the miry clay. And she praised the Lord. She was glad about that. Do you ever praise God? Do you ever thank the Lord for what he's done for you? You should. And she glorified God. Now notice Thought number eight is the devil's crowd got mad. Verse 14. And the rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation. The devil's crowd always get mad when they lose one of their own. The devil doesn't like to give up anybody. And when this woman was made straight, the devil's crowd got mad about it. They said that Jesus said, uh, why couldn't you heal her any day except the Sabbath? While you healed her on the Sabbath, you had all the rest of the week to heal her. Now you're healing her on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, you hypocrite. You go out here and you lead your cattle out of the barn to water. And you give them water on the Sabbath day because they're thirsty. And you hypocrite, you come here fussing because this descendant of Abraham has been healed on the Sabbath day. Said, you're nothing but a hypocrite. And that's all they were. They didn't mind watering their flock on the Sabbath. They didn't mind getting their donkeys out of the ditch on the Sabbath. They'd do other things they want to do on the Sabbath. But when this poor woman for 18 long years was straightened out, they got as mad as an old wet sitting hen. Oh, they didn't like that at all. They said Jesus did wrong. Oh, he broke the Sabbath. Now they didn't see the goodness of the woman being healed. They didn't see the woman praising God. They had no sympathy for the poor woman that was bound by the devil. They were more concerned about Jesus breaking the Sabbath than they were about healing that woman. And they didn't like it at all. Now, any time that you try to live for God, 
try to do anything for God, try to do right, you might as well expect old Satan to raise up his head and cause you trouble. It may be in your home. It may be in your community. It may be on your job. It may be uh, wherever you associate with people. There's a lot of good Christian people love the Lord and serve God on Sunday, leave the church on Sunday, praising God, go in and face the devil on the job on Monday. Well, he'll be right there waiting for you to come in. And he'll start tormenting you. I know by experience that when God first saved me, I'd work hard for the Lord. I'm not, don't regret that. I was in service about every night somewhere in the church every Sunday. And I'd go in on my job Monday morning and the first thing I'd run into would be the devil through somebody that bugged me and caused me heartaches and trouble and make them a job hard on me and, and uh, do everything they could against me. And I had to face the devil on Monday and Tuesday and when, when I'd go in on the job, I'd always run into the old longhorn and there I'd have to face him and put up with him uh, during the week. But I got victory when I was out of there and on the Lord's, in the Lord's house praising God. But brother, just as certain as God blessed me real good, I'd run into the devil on the job. There may be some of you running into the devil on your job. That's the devil for you. He'll do that. He'll do everything he can to discourage you and, and tear you down and break your health and, and cause you to become grieved and, and uh, break your spirit. Do everything he can against you. But just say, God, give me grace and give me strength to take it and move on for God. God's grace is sufficient. And then Jesus put them to shame in verses 15 through 17. Jesus put that religious crowd to shame. Then the Lord answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound low these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. There these hypocrites bowed their heads in shame because they realized they were wrong. They act like a dog that broke up a hen nest. There they were, their heads all bowed and in shame and because it made that statement and Jesus just cut them asunder. Now they had no right to be angry at him and angry at this woman. They were a bunch of hypocrites. Then finally number 10, the people rejoiced, verse 17, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Now the people praised God and they saw the good things, the glorious things, the wonderful things that is done by Jesus. They were so glad of that. They just praised the Lord for that. They were happy that Jesus straightened this poor woman out. For 18 years she had been going around in that condition. And Jesus straightened her out, made her every whit whole, defeated the devil and they had a jubilee around there. Now Jesus Christ is more powerful than the devil. And he can defeat the devil that gives you trouble. He can help you solve your problem. He can help you overcome that opposition and the heartache and the troubles and disappointments you face in your home or on your job or in your community. The devil can help. It can, God can help you overcome the devil and give you wisdom to know how to handle it. Just turn to the Lord and say, Now, Lord, this is a pretty big problem. And you said, I'm not as in all of our ways. You direct our pace. Now, God, I need you now. I've run into the devil. And I need you and I want you to help me. And God will help you. God loves his children. God's concerned about his children. God wants to help you. And God will help you. Now if you think you can handle it by yourself, God may just let you go ahead and let the devil give you a good spanking. But if you look to God and ask God to help you, then he will help you as you sojourn. Remember this crooked woman was made straight. And God can straighten out you spiritually wherever you are. She was straightened out physically, but God can straighten you out spiritually and maybe even physically if you let him do so. Thank you for listening. You have listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray today in Jesus' name that you'll take the message and that you'll use it. God, I feel like deep down in my heart there's somebody out there in the radio listening audience that really needed this message. Maybe also here in the auditorium. God, use it. Use it to your glory. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Debbie, play through a stanza. Debbie's going to play through a stanza of a hymn. And if you're here and you need to get saved, you need to come back to God, you want to join the church where we receive members, would you come? She plays a stanza.